Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. So as I'm sure most of you know, there's a big mid lane mage update coming very, very soon for the mid season update. Now, even though there aren't any new updates regarding the actual champion changes out yet, except for the leaked Cassiopeia rework on the PBE server a few days ago, there is a very new post on the boards on the PBE section for League of Legends by a writer. And oh boy, is it an exciting one because he goes over a lot of the changes happening to the AP items while also introducing a few new ones. Now I have to say some of these new ones seem very very interesting and extremely unique to the point where I'm really curious how it'll work out in League of Legends. But let's not waste any more time and go right into the massive AP item changes or reworks. So the first one I'll be talking about is going to be one of the new items, one that I'm also very excited for. The name is obviously subject to change but currently it is called Hextech Rocket Belt. It'll be made from a Hextech Revolver, a Kindle Gem and plus 800 gold so just under 2800. This seems to be somewhat of a decent price for an item that offers 300 HP, 80 AP, and even 10% cooldown reduction. But obviously this isn't the major component of this item, the major thing is the active effect called Firebolt. The active effect of this will essentially just make you dash 300 units in a direction at 1200 speed. 1200 speed is the exact same speed that a Morgana Q will fly out, so it gives you an idea on how fast you move. It'll also deal a lot of base damage plus 25% of your ability damage, and enemies hit by more than one fireball take 15% damage from additional fireballs with a 30 second cooldown. So this does not go over walls, but it obviously gives immobile mages, maybe like a Zarath, maybe even like a Heimerdinger, a Velkaz, maybe Cassiopeia, a lot of potential mobility and ways to just set up a really cool play or get out of a bad situation. My guess with this is the fact that Riot might be trying to replace Flash, but not actually just flat out remove the summoner spell, but instead, I feel like they're trying to make it so you don't always have to take Flash in every single game and you have more options to maybe take other summoner spells. So without question, this is going to be a unique item that deals a lot of damage and gives a lot of new playmaking potential to champions that simply did not have it before. But there's another new item and let's talk about that next. This one is called Hextech GLP07A, also a temporary name, one that I'm expecting to definitely change because that name quite honestly sucks. But the name is the least of our worries. So this item is going to be building out of a Catalyst of Ions, Hextech Revolver, 750 gold and it'll cost you 3000 gold offering 80 AP, 300 HP and 400 mana. But wait, some of you are probably thinking, what the hell is a Catalyst of Ions? Well here it is very quickly, it's essentially a new Catalyst. One that no longer grants you that HP and mana that you know and love whenever you level up. Instead, now 15% of damage taken from champions is gained as mana and 15% of mana spent is gained as health. Which sounds insanely strong, but luckily you can see that there is a limit. But going back to the other item, now that you know what Catalyst of Ions is, the passive ability of this new Hextech item is shared with Catalyst of Ions. But once again, this also has a completely new active effect. On a 30 second cooldown that's also shared with other Hextech items, throw an arc of 5 piercing icy bolts that explode to deal 100 to 200 base damage plus 20% of your ability power as magic damage. All enemies, note that it says enemies not champions, hit are slowed by 60% decaying over half a second. So champions that want to add more CC to their kit or people that are maybe very close range mages like mid range mages, maybe Aurelian Sol, maybe even Cassiopeia, that want to utilize this and really make full use of it that obviously required to be more or less in the middle of a team fight can be quite strong and add a lot of presence to the team fight. Slow effects are really really important and vital in League of Legends, so this has a lot of potential to set up a lot of really cool plays for your team. And here's yet again another new item called Lost Chapter. So the recipe for this will be a simple Sapphire Crystal Amplifying Tome and 115 gold, giving you a 900 total gold spent to get this item. It'll give you a bit of ability power, a little bit of mana, and a unique passive upon leveling up restores 20% of your maximum mana over 3 seconds. Now in just a bit I'll be talking about Catalyst, and you'll notice that it actually got reworked so it doesn't offer you HP and mana upon leveling up. So it seems like this item will be 
be taking its place, but only focusing on the mana portion. If you're playing a really aggressive mage and you just run out of mana really, really quickly, and there's quite a bit of mages that do that, well, this item will hopefully help you with that. Because you'll also notice throughout this video, a lot of items are actually losing their mana regeneration aspect. So I'm definitely expecting this item to be quite popular as a pickup. The rest of the items we'll be talking about are ones you already know, but they have been quite significantly changed. So starting it off with Tear of the Goddess, it no longer grants you mana regeneration, which is obviously a little bit weird since we're so used to having this item grant you mana regeneration. But it does still give you mana back in the sense that it refunds 25% of the mana spent. Now the core part of this item, obviously stacking it up to 750, seems to be untouched. And they're actually trying to buff it by instead of giving you a small mana regeneration, Generation that by the time you get this item, chances are you don't have a lot of mana regeneration to begin with to make the percent useful. 25% of the mana that you actually spend from casting your abilities seems to be a lot better of a change. So I'm definitely curious to see how this will affect it. And next up we have Chalice of Harmony, a very similar item to Tear of the Goddess in what it was meant for. The change to this item is actually very significant, but it's a lot more fitting of its name. Its new passive is as follows, increases your health regeneration by 100% if your health percent is lower than your mana percent. Or vice versa, increases your mana regeneration by 100% if your mana percent is lower than your health percent. This is a really interesting change and I really like it just because of how different it is and how unique it is. A lot of champions can potentially benefit off of this and I really like the fact that it's a lot more fitting of its name. Either way though, a really cool change and I'm really excited for this one to come out. Alright, let's talk about Morellonomicon. This is an absolute staple item when it comes to AP mages. And what Riot is trying to do here is separate Morellonomicon and Athene's Unholy Grail simply because these two items were just way too close in what they offered. So talking about Morellonomicon first, now the recipe will be a lost chapter, a fiendish codex, 500 gold for only 2100 gold total. But you'll notice a big difference is that it no longer grants you 100% mana regeneration, but instead offers you 400 flat mana. So if you're looking to increase your mana pool, maybe to synergize with Archangel Staff even further, well, this is absolutely perfect. But moving along to Athene's Unholy Grail, and holy shit, the changes are very, very interesting. So getting the boring stuff out of the way, it costs you a Chalice Fiendish Codex 300 gold for a total of only 2100 gold. So obviously being much cheaper, but also offering you less AP, less mana regeneration, but still the same MR and CDR. Getting mana back on kill or assist has been removed, but you get something a lot more interesting. Now you gain 15% of the pre-mitigation damage dealt to champions as blood chargers up to 100 to 270 based on level and healing or shielding another ally will consume blood charges to heal that ally. I'm seriously kind of scared as to how strong this item sounds because this item was made for the sole purpose of enhancing the playstyle and effectiveness of support AP mid laners. So I'm assuming if you're playing someone like Orianna, Morgana, Karma, Lux, Lulu, well this is gonna be absolutely perfect. Because whenever you use your shielding or healing abilities on an ally, well you're also gonna be healing them as well. This seems like the ideal item to get for these champions and it seems like it will make them so darn useful. I mean, they're already damn useful. Why is this going to make them even more useful? I don't know. I mean, I love the sound of this item. I love how different it is now and it's very, very cool and interesting. But I just hope that it won't make these champions too strong. Next up, I want to say that they're removing the Will of the Ancients item because they're flat out removing the Spell Them functionality of items in general. The only item that will retain this effect is going to be Hextech Gunblade because it's a little bit different in how it works. But other than that, consider Spell Them to be completely removed from the game. But Vladimir will be getting a rework to compensate for the removal of a very important stat for his kits. So let's talk about these spell vamp items, and the first one being Hextech Revolver. It'll cost you now 100 less gold, its ability power is unchanged, but the spell vamp, like I said, is removed. But it now has an actual passive effect to it called Magic Bolt. Your basic attacks deal 75 to 150 magic damage on hit. So it seems like Riot is trying to make the whole Hextech item set to be a lot more offensive. So if you're trying to play the laning phase extremely aggressively, or if your champion is just a natural aggressive type champion, well, these items and this whole item. Item set will be complementing you very well. 
But despite what I just said about Hextech Gunblade, it is still getting a little bit of changes. So the cost and the actual Omni Vamp passive where it gives you life seal and spell vamp is not changed whatsoever. But instead, the active damage is actually doubled, but it's a lower AP ratio. Apparently, the active effect is absolutely instant and doesn't have that travel time. It just instantly, I'm assuming, hits the target and it will still slow that target. For the most part, this item is the same other than the fact that it now has much higher base damage on its active damage effect. And next up we have Rod of Ages where Rod decided to make it much cheaper but also offer you a bit less stats overall. It seems like the intent for them with this item was the fact that they want you to rush it as soon as possible and get the item snowballing as soon as possible. Mainly because now again it is 500 gold cheaper. And more importantly the combined cost is only 50 gold so essentially once you have the catalyst and the need to see large rod you pretty much have this item. Next up we have another extremely popular AP item, Zhonya's Hourglass. The recipe is similar because it still requires a Seeker's Arm Guard but instead now it also requires a Fiendish Codex. Now what stat does Fiendish Codex offer that is not something you've ever seen on Zhonya's Hourglass? cooldown reduction. And it seems like that's exactly what this item will now offer you, 10% cooldown reduction. It is also a cheaper item but it also offers you 30 less AP and the active stasis cooldown has been increased significantly. So the intention here is to not make this item just a flat out, you know what, I want to get this item for the AP and maybe I'll make use of the active effect. No, now you get it solely for the purpose of getting the active components. It is much more of a utility focused item but it also gives you that 10% CDR so that now now whenever you're trying to hit the max CDR cap, it's just simply easier. And a very similar to Zhonya's Hourglass that is Abyssal Scepter for the Magic Resistance component. This one will also be costing you a Fiendish Codex because it also offers 10% CDR. It will now cost you 2750 total gold which is quite a significant increase. But it will also offer you less ability power but it will give you a bit more magic resistance. And of course that juicy juicy cooldown reduction. It's passive where it reduces the magic resistance of nearby enemies will no longer be affected on minions and it will also now require you to scale it. So it'll start at 10 but then it'll go all the way up to 25 MR reduction on nearby enemies. Currently it's sitting at just a flat 20 so obviously later on in the game this will be a bit more useful. But the intention with this item is to make it not such a pick this item up first and essentially win your lane. Instead now they want Abyssal Scepter just like Zhonya's Hourglass to be much more of a utility and situationally focused item. So you get it only in very certain situations where you simply need the magic resistance and you want to just duel other champions. But it's not something you might want to rush anymore again because the magic resistance reduction now scales per level. There's also a couple of somewhat unrelated changes to the AP mages talking about Spectral's Cowl and Banshee's Veil. It's in the post so I thought I'd talk about it but essentially they're changing these by just a little bit. They're making it cost more but give you more health but also offer you less MR. While on the flip side Banshee's Veil is quite the opposite costing you less, giving you less HP but still the same magic resistance. And the final item is going to be Spirit Visage. This one will cost you less gold, give you less MR, give you more HP regeneration and even more passive healing. They're trying to make this item synergize better with Warmog's armor and essentially just synergize better with any champions that have some form of healing effects. And well, I mean, there you guys have it. Those are the new AP items being introduced, a lot of reworked ones as well, so obviously it's a lot to take in. Personally, I'm extremely excited because it feels like they're giving a lot more essentially personal personality to these AP items and they don't all just feel for the most part the same thing. I'm going to be really excited to see when these items come out to see how they play out, how they will affect all the changes, all the mages, obviously the mage changes themselves. But once the mage changes get announced, don't worry guys, you know I'll be on it instantly and I'll let you guys know everything about it and my thoughts as well. But if you guys did enjoy this video, found it interesting, enjoyed the changes or whatever, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, make sure to share this around with your friends because goddammit these are some massive changes. But thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you for the next video. Peace.